I can see myself. Yeah, that's what I like about this camera, is I can see. Yeah, I like it. Oh, you know, you sink into the couch a lot more when you're heavy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can feel the weight of you, too. <laughs> Alright, everyone. Welcome back to Cody's Lab. So today, I have my sister here. She's been in a few videos, but uh, never really been introduced. Uh, so this is Melanie. Yep. Uh, you might even be able to see her in these uh, family portraits behind us. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I could like point to them with my bow and be like a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, today we have her and her violin. Uh, she's a little bit more musically minded than I am. And I've always wanted to see what would happen if we filled up an instrument such as this with a heavy gas such as sulfur hexafluoride. I finally got a bottle of it. This is the uh, deep voice gas. The one so, that makes scary voices, yeah. Instruments such as the violin are made out of wood and they're essentially a wooden box which is hollow on the inside here. And on top of the box, of course, they've got some strings which are held under tension. And when the strings are plucked, such as with uh, the bow or your fingers, they vibrate and they produce a sound. We're not testing the sounds that the string makes when it's in the gas. What we're testing is what effect this empty cavity has on the sound. If the sound takes longer to go from one side of the cavity to the other, then it's going to change something. But will that change the the notes in any appreciable way? Let's find out. Uh, you want to like play a little something so we can get like a, a bass line sure, before we start? Sure, what do you want me to play? Do you uh, want me to do like, because I don't know about like copyright or whatnot. So. Yeah, I don't want to get copy smited. Um, but th this would probably fall under cover. I, I guess you could do just like go through the, the notes. Okay. Or that, uh, that rock and roll thing you did was kind of interesting. <laughs> about having heavy gas in my violin, so I googled how to get heavy gas out of your violin. I take it Google did not have an answer. No, they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, did you feel anything coming out over there? No. Oh yeah, I do actually. Okay. So I'm trying to get the air to come out. So if you, you want okay. it coming out? Yeah. Oh, because you're pushing the air out and putting the... Okay. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I figured this would be harder with helium because you'd have to like turn it upside down. <laughs> okay. Do you think it's good? Well, we want to get as much of the air in place as possible. Okay. <laughs> Making a scary noise, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Okay, that's probably decent. Alright, let's try it. Resonance on it is a lot louder. That's so weird. Here, play through all the notes. It's just, it echoes more, I think. And even when I talk here, it echoes, yeah. Like 
Yeah, she just, it'll come out eventually. Oh, I can actually feel. Can you? Yeah, I can feel like little puffs of, as the gas like shoots out of it. <laughs> it out! <laughs> It'd probably be more effective to like blow it out probably. with air. <laughs> the same way we put it in. But upside down would be better. Oh, yeah. Huh. That's pretty interesting. Oh, I saw something coming out of it. I don't know if you guys probably can see dust. That. <laughs> May oh yeah, that would make sense. I guess we get a cleaning for my violin, that's cool. Well, that's probably the majority of it. for it. It's, I feel like you'd almost have to cut the video and like I was hoping for a much bigger result. Oh, like how it goes with your voice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was like, yeah. I was hoping it would like turn into like a cello or something. Oh, I was terrified of that. <laughs> <laughs> I like my violin. I wonder if there's an instrument that we could do, like a horn might do it. I could get my guitar and try it, but... And the guitar's the same general function as oh, this. Oh, that's a good point. So what did we discover? Well, the string produced the same note, and that is expected, and it seems that the string is entirely what determines the note that the violin produces. You know, the uh, string's vibration, I wouldn't even expect it to be different, even if it were surrounded by the heavy gas. You know, if you change your altitude, you, the atmospheric density changes, it doesn't change the notes. And that makes sense because the uh, the frequency that this uh, string will vibrate at depends on the tension that it's under and the mass of each part of the string. Having more gas around it will just dampen that motion. It won't actually uh, cause it to be a different frequency. Now the box of the violin, the resonance chamber, uh, it did change the violin somewhat. It did seem that the violin was louder. So the effect that was going on there is the vibrations from the string is being transferred into the wood and the wood is more able to transfer the sound into the heavy gas than it is the lighter gas. Uh, to explain that, imagine this coin here is your wood and this coin is the uh, sulfur hexafluoride, the heavy gas. If I slam this into that coin, this coin is going to be receiving a pretty substantial amount of energy because it's going to get moving at the same speed that the uh, wood hit it at. Now if you had a lighter gas, such as air or maybe even helium, and you hit it, it's going to still move away at about the same speed, but since it's so much smaller, it can't pick up as much kinetic energy for a given velocity. But for the actual sound moving through the gas, the gap between the waves might be a bit smaller, but the time between them is going to be the same. It's kind of like uh, if you were to drop marbles into honey or something. If you drop the marbles into the honey once per second, while they're falling through the air, they'll get a quite a distance between them. But once they get into the honey, the distance might shrink down, but they'll all be moving together so that they'll reach the bottom of the container once per second. So the sound just comes back up with a slightly greater delay than normal, but the frequency will be the same as what is being put off directly by the string. Since whistles and indeed your voice create the sound by bouncing the sound waves around inside of a cavity, they are affected because the amount of time it takes the sound to go from one side to the other is what determines the pitch. 
Uh, you can see me blowing uh, heavy gas. Uh, I used a xenon through a dog whistle in a video, which I'll link down in the description. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> Hope you all enjoyed. Oh, goodness, I'll see you next time. <laughs> I mean, I had to do something to confirm that it wasn't over the gas. Oh, I see, I see. I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you know. <laughs> you okay? Oh yeah, it comes out pretty quick. Oh, that's so scary. <laughs> well, that was interesting. This is the most people you've ever played for? Huh? Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> A little terrifying. You know.